It is the year 2020. Today's spotlight focuses on the Decepticon clones, Pounds, and Wingspan. Good morning, residents of the tube of you. Today we're going to be looking at these two little guys. These two little freaky little grunt runts. These are Pounce and Wingspan, the Decepticon clones. And boy, are these little fun guys. I mean, really, these are just adorable. And they're fun to play with. And they're just so unique so let's just get started with seeing how they transform shall we the decepticon clones in the past were they were kind of like the at the at the tail end of the 1987 toy line so they didn't really get uh, a whole lot of depiction on the cartoon show they were just kind of there and done in a uh toy toy line series that just focused on a bunch of brand new gimmicks. You had Headmasters, Power Masters, Chicken Masters, and a whole bunch of others. These guys were the Decepticon clones to face off against the Autobot clones, and their whole gimmick was that they looked like each other. whoop de ding dang do. Now, for the longest time, I just did not like these guys. In fact, you could almost say that my apathy towards these figures was bordering on a kind of hatred. Okay, I should explain. When I was a little kid, I had the Autobot clones, Fastlane and Cloudraker, and they were some of the derpiest toys I ever had. I mean, they just look like the bare minimum effort ever put into a toy. I was kind of sad to, to have this toy as a kid. Their transformation was just so awfully simple it was just not interesting at all and i think that i abused that those little figures just because they just didn't do anything for me um at the time i was just also into ninja turtles and um you know ghostbusters too and to have these little guys in my little toy box uh, they did nothing for me so um for the longest time i couldn't shake the idea that the the clones of the Transformers toy line were just these little whatever-nothing characters that didn't add anything to it. And I think in general I had that feeling throughout um, the, the rest. When the Micromasters and the Pretenders came out, I just turned away. I could not be bothered with any of that. So when these guys were released in Titan's Return... I had the same feelings, and that was un right up until um, I saw someone else do a review for the Decepticon clones and noticed how very much they look like the, cl the colors of Six Shot. These look like little henchmen of Six Shot, um, and they just look like they go so well with this whole teal team six dynamic going on you got overlord over here you got six shot these two look like they're henchmen of sorts don't they don't they look like little grunts that are being ordered around yeah they do yeah 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 plus they look like they go really great in my personal collection just because i was really bought into the whole titan master gimmick i really am looking for anything that fits that and to have these little figures have um they have little seats where you can put in a titan master i was on board at that point the colors are great they are impressive they look awesome they they um they they're fun they they don't require a whole lot of complicated maneuvering and yes they you have a, a lot of visible robot issues but overall i think that you do get a really good figure and you get a, a nice little um um bonus um setup going on with the uh, the way that interacts with the titan matches but for me it was just about color uh color combining and i think that i've been i've been one i've been won over by figures that i've disliked for the longest time it's funny how oftentimes you run into something you look at it a slightly different way 
and then you just kind of fall in love with it. I don't know. It's a magical feeling, to be sure. I really like the way that Wingspan looks. I think he's an awesome figure. I really like the way that Pounce looks. Um, they just go good together, all these guys. Teal Team 6. Now, I know in the story of the Japanese Headmasters cartoon, the Decepticon clones are kind of just... They're, they're sided with Six Shot inadvertently. They're, they're not, like, on the same team, necessarily. Um, and then Six Shot just kills him. He breaks their necks, they're dead. Um, and that's pretty much it, as far as I know. But then... You know, in in my head, in my head canon, um, they're part of the same team. I think Six Shot gives them orders. And it's not like Pounce and Wingspan, uh, Wingspan really have any aspirations. It's not like they're, like Starscream, they're trying to overthrow the Decepticon leaders. They're henchmen and they will always be henchmen. And I like that. I think that they just kind of serve that role that uh, we need to just take care of the dirty work, guys. That's their job, and I love them for it. These are goons. Hired goons. Hired goons? What better job could you have than to be the, the little grunts of the commander of the dino base? The dino base commander, city commander, six shot. In a world of commanders, Pouncing Wingspan are the Eagle and Wolf affiliates of the dino base commander, six shot. The port on Pounce's back is molded to fit exactly a Titan Master. However, uh, it's not a, an exactly a perfect fit. It looks like they were going for it. They were going for the whole Titan Master gimmick, and then at the last second, they um, decided to back out of it because the little section where the foot peg is supposed to fit into is a bit too shallow on the figures. So you can't plug them in and have them stay in there if you turn the figure upside down they're just gonna fall right out but if you have them sitting straight up they're gonna be riding that figure like noble mounts no problem and i mean look at these colors there's just something about that teal and purple skittle tastic shell that is just so good and you just want to pop them in your mouth and chew on them the colors are just that irresistible Maybe these are the mounts of Giga and Mega. You can achieve Giga and Mega's mount mode after paying 5,000 hours of online gaming hours, or you could pay $50 for the downloadable content. Only wish they came with weapons. Why oh why were these figures released without any weapons? Come on Hasbro, what's going on here? Why do I need to go to third party just to get basics? Come on. Oh, you know what's a really cool thing? Okay, so Pounce's tail has a little uh, port on the end of it, uh, on the end of it, where you can attach uh, anything that fits a three millimeter uh, port. So you could take, for example, a Target Master weapon, like right off their backs, and attach it to Wingspan's or uh, uh, Pounce's tail, and let them um, shoot away um, like a sort of um, cannon that they just carry around on their back. I don't really know what to do with Pounce's arms when they're folded up under the underside of the wolf body. So if you turn the little handles around to the side, you can um, have the uh, fists open so you can put in uh, weapon storage on the side of the wolf so you could have little uh, cannons on the hips. However, that would expose the hollow arms, and I, that might look unsightly to uh, some collectors. Uh, otherwise, you could just have the arms tucked underneath um, with the hollowness sort of hidden. Although, you're not going to have the Siege-type uh, port compatibility, so I think this is one of those cases where um, you just kind of have to decide uh, which way um, to display it yourself, what, what looks best for you. Also, how's this for a setup? You can take the Prime Master armor uh, from the from the uh, Moonracer figures, from the um, 
uh, Predacon, no, no, sorry, the Terracon figures, and you can have uh, Pounds and Wingspan hold them as shields, and uh, the colors do uh, fit the theme rather nicely, although the, uh, the armor itself won't plug in anywhere on the figures, unfortunately. Uh, it's just too bad. Um, it feels like these figures are so close to being compatible with so many other lines. It's just that you kind of have to figure out where the uh, crossroads meet to get the most out of them. So the ultimate question is, do these figures fit into your collection? I don't know. It For me, it was a simple matter of kind of turning my head around and looking at them from a different angle otherwise i would have just ignored them but i think they're fun um they're they're their their compatibility with other figures it just kind of uh varies with the kind of uh figures in your collection so i think that if you have a collection and it um, fits then i think you can find a lot of entertainment otherwise um you might you're fine if you skip over these figures they're not gonna make or break your collection i think that they're just little good little little baddies they they, they're just little add-ons is how i see them okay thank you very much again and have a good day